There was talk about the Beatles coming to um, the States in 64. And Brian Epstein, knowing how much the Beatles um, idolized Elvis, admired him, um, got a hold of Colonel Parker to see if there was any kind of arrangement that could be made, you know, to get them to meet. Everything was quite secretive. You know, not a big deal was made about it because no one wanted it to get out in the press, especially Colonel Parker, and he would say how, you know, no one could say anything. He waited last minute to tell us all the plans and what was happening. Elvis kind of just went along with the program. I mean, he was, he was looking forward to meeting them. Or it was in the evening. We were all prepared and ready. The guys didn't want to show too much excitement because, you know, of course, this is Elvis. You know, and it's like, oh my God. You know, they were very careful not to overdo it about the Beatles were coming, but they were very excited. What was shocking was that fans were lining up and coming around the gate and knew something was going on, knew the Beatles were coming. And we were going, well, how could this happen? This is all very secretive. All of a sudden, there's like over 100 fans uh, out in front of the gate waiting for them to come. And we learned later that Colonel planned all of that, but we just couldn't figure out how they all knew. And Jerry Schilling and I greeted them at the door, and we led them in to, you know, kind of showed them around a little bit briefly, and then Elvis was waiting for them in the den. They were so cute. They were so cute. They were so excited, but so nervous. You could hear a pin drop when they walked in. You, you know, they looked around the room, they came in, you know, they're kind of like looking and, you know, all they cared about was, you know, seeing Elvis. They were excited, but holding it back. They wanted to be respectful, but I was amazed at how shy they were. Uh, we walked into the room. Elvis was sitting on the couch and got up and said hello. They were speechless. They were totally speechless. They were truly like kids, you know, meeting their idol, especially John Lennon. John was shy, timid, looking at him. I mean, I, I really believe that he just couldn't believe that he was actually there with Elvis Presley. It was a little bit awkward because they just kept looking at him and um, not really saying anything and not really sitting down, just staring at him. It felt like it was a long time, but uh, Elvis just said, you know, guys, if you're just going to stand around and stare at me, I might as well just do my own thing, and he grabbed a bass guitar. I heard later that Paul had told Jerry, once he picked up that bass guitar, I knew I was in. <laughs> and he starts playing, and uh, to Mohair Sam, Charlie Rich was playing on the jukebox. We had a jukebox there at the time with all the latest songs. So, and Elvis used to play over the song itself, so he'd practice in his bass. And he started playing bass, and then that just lightened up the whole, the whole evening. And then it was like joking around a little bit after that. I, I think that Elvis, you know, walked away from that thinking that these were good kids, that they've already sensed, you know, their popularity, but I think that knowing that they were in the States and they were getting a lot of recognition, that he wished them a lot of luck and um, well-being. Before they left, they invited Elvis to visit the house they were leasing a few days while they were here. And Elvis said, you know, he didn't know what his schedule was, but I do know a couple of the boys went. I think Jerry went. I don't know if Joe went, but I do know that uh, maybe Alan and Richard Davis had gone over, and they, they came back and said, boy, they were great to hang out with, and that um, John had said to Jerry, you know, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe that he was in front of me. He said, you know, if it wasn't for him, you know, we wouldn't be here.